Africa. Welcome everybody who's here. So excited about today's word. It's going to keep your hope alive. It's going to excite you. It's going to refresh you. Let's pray and let's begin. Father, thank you so much for this beautiful morning. Thank you, Father, that the entrance of your word brings light and it gives understanding to the simple. Thank you, Father, that you have given me the tongue of the land that I should have a word to speak in season to him who is weary, Father. You awaken me morning by morning to hear as the land. Thank you that as your word is being taught, we will receive abundance of revelation that we will grow in each and every way by the word. Thank you that your word is here to correct us, to reprove us, to correct us, to instruct us in righteousness, that we may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good word. Thank you, Father, that this word that is being shared this morning is going to do exactly that in each of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Um... The word I'm on my heart today to share is the word devotion. I even named this broadcast devotion. The word devotion, devotion. Devoting ourselves to God and to the life of God and to the word of God and to everything to do with God as people. The thing devotion, 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 devotion. That is the title. If you want to name this, if you want to write in your notebook, today we are talking about devotion. Okay? I'd like to read from Acts chapter 2. From verse 41 to verse 43 it says Acts chapter 2 verse 41 to 43 it says then those who gladly received his word were baptized and that day 3,000 souls were added to them and they continued steadfastly in the Apostles doctrine and in fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers then fear came upon every soul and many signs and wonders were done through the Apostles Another version of this very scripture talks about, instead of saying continued steadfastly, talks about devoting themselves to the word of God. And so as the people heard the word of God being shared by Peter the apostle, they, started, um, they first of all believed and they got baptized. After doing that, they devoted themselves. And I've just been thinking a lot about this word, devoting ourselves. What does the word devotion mean? I looked it up and it means to give over yourself, to commit yourself, to make a solemn act of commitment, or to give direct your money, um, time or effort to a cause. I'd like you to think and realize about the word devotion, that devotion is to give yourself. Where were you? Do you understand? Devotion is not forceful. If I choose to devote myself to something, I give myself to the thing right it's not forced on me so you can't force you can't force your child to 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 do something and then you say the child is devoted to it no to devote is to give yourself where were you you put yourself voluntarily subject to that thing right and so having heard the word these people gave themselves they gave themselves no one forced them no one took themselves they took themselves to give yourself holy exactly you give yourself i want you to really think about that that devotion is giving yourself where were you they gave themselves to this doctrine they gave themselves to the teaching of the apostles having heard they made that decision i want us to realize that devotion is from you you decide to devote yourself okay Devotion. I want us to think through a number of things that I started to think about devotion. What are you devoted to? What have you voluntarily given yourself to? What thing in your life has your complete attention and availability? Attention and availability. Where is your heart and mind focused? Consistently and constantly. Not once in a while. Because where you're focused consistently and constantly is what you're devoted to. You're not devoted to traveling. Do you know why? Because you don't travel every day. You travel maybe in December and maybe in summer holidays. So you can't say I'm devoted to going on the plane. It's not something that happens once in a while. Whereas the businessman who has business deals every single day could maybe say I've given myself maybe to travel. I want to bring your mind to the understanding that devotion is constant and consistent. It's not once in a while. You can't say you're consistent to, to dining at somewhere. No, but you're consistent to eating matoke in your home. Why? Because that one you do it consistently every day and you give yourself to it. Okay, so two things there. Giving yourself and then secondly, commitment and constancy. Okay, I want to bring us to the bring our attention today to the realization that we must revive devotion to God. 
as a generation, as a people, we must revive gen we must revive devotion, giving ourselves completely, not giving ourselves conveniently, but giving ourselves completely, friends. When you devote yourself, it's not about convenience. Why? Because devotion is I have made the decision to be subject to this authority. Now, whatever comes, I trust that God is going to take care of me. And so I've given myself to him. It's not about convenience. It's first and foremost about understanding the lordship of God and his authority. The people we devote ourselves to, the teachings we devote ourselves to, we allow and understand that they have the authority over us and we trust that God will take care of us as we devote ourselves. I want to think about some things that we have lost devotion about. I want you to really think about this thing, devotion, giving yourself to. Again, these questions, I want them to remain in your mind. What am I devoted to? What has my complete attention and availability? And where is my heart and mind constantly and consistently focused? Constantly and consistently focused. I'll ask you again, what are you devoted to? What has your complete attention and availability? And where is your heart and mind constantly and completely focused? Having heard the word of God in Acts chapter 2 verse 41 to 43, having heard the word of God and being cut to the heart, they received Jesus and got baptized. Then they gave themselves completely. Giving, them, giving ourselves holy is what devotion is all about. I want you to realize, friends, that we have to get back to devotion. I started to think about where some, of, some of the places that we have lost devotion and where we need to revive. Think about this. In relationships, man and woman relationships, in our generation, we've lost the understanding that marriage is devotion. The man devotes to the wife and the wife devotes to the man. And so what has crept into us is that we can cohabit, we can try out. Because I remember recently I was asking a very close relative of mine, very young girl, and she was dating and I told her, why are you dating? Are you going to marry that person? Because remember that dating is in the process towards devotion. But because we have been surrounded by a society where you can try out and, and, and jump out, the girl realized that actually I don't have to be dating because I'm not going to be devoted to this person. Relationships is a place where we've lost devotion and so we find that we are trying out. M marriage is about, this whole dating thing is about trying out. Ask yourself, am I, do I think I'm going to marry this person? Okay, the second thing I want you to think, devotion. We live in a society that is constantly bombarded with social media from all sorts of places. You're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're on Twitter, you're on Snapchat, you're on TikTok, you're on like 10 different and you're not devoted to any and so we're in a society where there is so much and so that if i may call it the art of devotion has been lost where you say i am giving myself completely to this thing no why because there's new jazz on twitter then there's new jazz on Facebook, then there's new jazz so we find ourselves we find ourselves in a society where this thing called giving yourself holy does not exist and yet for us to see results in god we must be devoted to him to his teaching to the leadership he has given us to the, to the people that he has given us to have cover over us if you're planted in a church you will benefit from that church by being devoted to it psalm 92 verse 13 to 14 what does it say it says that the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree he shall grow like a cedar in lebanon those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. The only way to flourish in the courts of our God is to be planted, friends. Devotion must be revived. Devotion to what? Devotion to God. Devotion to our leaders. Devotion to whatever God has invited us to. Devotion to submitting ourselves to this word of God. Devoting ourselves and saying that if the word of God has said it, that settles it. That is devotion. You subject yourself to the authority of the word of God over your life. It says, the thing is, guys, being planted in a church is devotion. Because, guys, I mean, I tell you to think about this verse, uh, Psalm 92, verse 13 to 14. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Have you ever seen a plant soil hoping? Plants don't soil hope. That's why they bear fruit, because they are devoted to exactly where they are planted. They don't soil up, they don't go church hopping, they don't go jumping up and down, looking for where is the next exciting thing, where is the next cape, where is the next forest that I can make new friends. No, if it's planted in Mabira, it's in Mabira. If it's planted in Goa, whichever forest you are, no, they seem, it's, if it's planted in Amazon, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not soil hopping. Why? Because that is not how a, a tree grows and flourishes. 
Planting is devotion. Planting is subjecting yourself to the leadership where you have been called. Friends, there is such a thing as devoting yourself to the doctrine and to the teaching where God has placed you. Are you completely devoted? Question is, let me ask it in another way. Let me use other English words for you to then be able to answer this yourself. Are you completely available to the teaching where you have been planted? Are you completely, is your attention completely given to where God has planted you? Is your heart and mind focused on the teaching of the house where God has planted you? This thing about hopping around does not work. There is no fruit without devotion. Devotion to God and in, 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 in turn then devoting to the leaders that God has placed over us. Why? Because these leaders are appointed by God. Had these people not devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles, how would they have grown in the doctrine of the apostles? But some of us are, are planted but have planted. Like, you understand, eh? the, the, some roots are here, some roots are there. No, 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 it doesn't mean you don't learn from elsewhere, but there is a place where it, there is your constant availability, your constancy, your consistency, your, your steadfastness in doctrine. Where are you planted, friends? Where are you available? Where are you focusing your heart and mind? This thing of scrolling, it's not bad to listen to other teachings, and that's not what I'm saying, that now never go and listen to anyone else, no. But you don't grow by scrolling 10,000 teachings on YouTube. No, those are supplementary. The same way your child does not grow by hanging out at KFC every day. That's why you take your child to KFC only over the weekend or on Sunday afternoon after church. Why? Because they cannot grow by being devoted to chips and chicken. They cannot grow by being devoted to ice cream and pancakes. So where they are committed, where they are devoted is your home, where there is all food value, rice, beans, chicken, and what consistently and constantly that is why it's called devotion so you, you see the thing is that's why planting it's not about don't go anywhere else don't listen no it's about where are you consistently committed where are you available to be taught where are you present constant consistent committed that is what devotion is about friends friends we have to get back to devotion to god to the doctrine to being planted to to choosing to give ourselves i want you to remember the thing that i started with that devotion is giving yourself where were you nobody forces you but the thing is once you make the decision stick to the decision please do not be an undevoted person that is the thing that we must revive we must revive commitment consistency remaining steadfast the way these people are, are remain steadfast and guess what the result was in verse 43 the fear came upon fear of the Lord came upon every soul and many signs and wonders were done through the prophets friends we want the results of many signs and wonders being done we want the results of the things being done by apostles but we don't want to be devoted to their teaching if you belong to the house of worship harvest are you devoted to our apostle Moses teachings Oh, you have to be begged to attend MC Live. You have to be begged. You're not devoted. But what? The verse that people highlight and bold is that every soul, whatever, and then signs and wonders were done. But that was as a result of devoting. It's like your child refusing to sit at the dining table. Every day they are refusing. They are refusing. But when they get kwashako, they are blaming you. When they get marasmus, they are blaming They are blaming you. That is the thing about devotion. It is, our, it's, it is for our good. When you give yourself to somebody, when you give yourself to God, it's because you recognize that in God you will be covered, you will be sheltered, you will be protected. What a privilege it is to have somewhere to be devoted. Don't see it as a disadvantage. Recognize that it is God covering you. It is God stirring you on. It is God preparing you. It is God propelling you and redeeming the time. Because most of the time we are devoted to things and to people who have gone ahead and before us. The reason we are devoted to God, guess what? One, he's the God of the universe, but also secondly, he knows the end from the beginning. Before we were formed in our wombs, he knew us. Before we became, he knew. He appointed us and called us in our mother's womb before we were formed. The reason we are devoted to God is because in our, our tomorrow is in his past. Our, that's in Ecclesiastes 3. The reason, because you know that this, this person knows more. So devotion is protection. It is not, it is not the thing. The world has deceived us. The world has deceived us into this thing called independence. I can do all things by all by myself, all by myself. Well, I want you to know that there's nothing new under the sun. And the people that commit to devoting themselves to the Father and to the people that God has given them grow much further and much faster and redeem more time. 
Are you devoted? Are you completely available? Are you committed? Are you constantly present to be under the doctrine of where you have been planted? They that are planted, think about that tree in Marina Forest. It does not soil hope. Shall flourish in the courts of our God. Devotion, devotion, devotion to doctrine, to teaching, to the people God has given us to lead us, to the places God has placed us. Are you present, available, and constantly available to listen in? Friends, commitment, consistency, constancy. Devotion, devotion must be revived. Devotion must be revived where we give ourselves. Where were you? Friends, devotion is your decision. Devotion is your decision. You give yourself. Nobody forces you, but I'm telling you the benefits of the cover, the benefits of the promotions that come. The, because you see, <coughs> when we humble ourselves, because when you give yourself, it means that you're humbling yourself to recognize that this person has authority over you. This person has something that you don't know. This person has gone before you. Devotion is giving of yourself. You are the one who commits and then you become constant. You become consistent, you become committed, you become available, and that is the result that that fear fell upon every soul and many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. Devotion is your decision. I like that, Pastor Jeremy. Devote yourself to the teaching of the apostles where God has blessed you. Stop church hoping. Stop hoping, hoping, hoping. Ba hoping. This thing about hoping. You guys, we are in a society where there is not such a thing as commit. That when you tell people commit and marry the girl before you start, they're like, no, what? I have my opinion. This thing about committing must be revived. The scripture that I shared even as I was praying that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped to every, every good work. For that word of God to equip you and to correct you, you must, under, you must have allowed that it is Lord. You must have allowed that that word has, has some sort of power, not some sort of, has all the power in your life that you're subject to it. That's the thing about devotion. Where were you? Because the word cannot correct you if you have your own opinion. The word cannot correct you if you think that you also have another thing to add to it. The word of God cannot correct you or instruct you if you think you're cleverer than God. The thing is, friends, instructions and people who commit to us are, I mean, <coughs> instructions and people who correct us are people who love us. If you, you cannot have the word of God plus your opinion and then say that the word of God is Lord. No. Devotion, commitment, constancy. If you say be planted and you're not planted, you're not devoted to the word. Do you know why? Because you're, you're disobeying directly the word of God. If you say, honor your father and mother that you may live long on us and that it may be well with you and that you may live long and you refuse because you have your opinion, guess what? You're not being devoted. Now, <coughs> sometimes is it hard? Yes. But the first decision that must be made is that I'm going to obey. Then after that, you go and say, okay, now father, how? That is how the word corrects us. That's how it, 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 it teaches us. It instructs us. The first order of business when you're devoted is to understand. That's why obedience is immediate when you're devoted to the word of God. Because the first, this answer you must, the first thing you must set on your heart is that I will obey. Then after that, if you have never talked to your parent for 10 years, for 20 years, they beat you when you are young. Then that's when you go back to God and say, okay, father, I agree. I'm going to honor. Now show me how. Devotion, because you're determined that that word has authority. You have given yourself to subject, to be subject to that word of God. Friends, devotion. I'll read um, Acts chapter 2, verse 41 to 42, 43 again. Then, those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day 3,000 were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in the breaking of bread and prayers, then fear came upon every soul and many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. That as we devote, there will be results. But friends, today we must revive devotion. This thing of hoping, hoping around, no. Commit to where God has planted you and watch to see the acceleration that God does for you. That is the word on my heart. The questions again that I will leave you today with is, are you devoted? Are you completely, is your attention, and is, are you completely available? Are you completely committed? Is your heart and mind focused? That 
is what devotion is. Devotion is not visiting. Devotion is committing yourself, choosing to be constant, and you're the one who takes yourself there. And then having taken yourself there, you give yourself completely. We must revive devotion. Devotion is the decision you must make to revive. That we have been bombarded so much by this thing about do your do, be your, be you do your own thing. What what what? No, there are people who have gone before you in that thing that you want to do. Would you humble yourself and devote yourself to learning from them, especially if they are following after Christ, that you may be propelled, that you may be accelerated, because. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. As you devote yourselves to these people who have been, who our God has placed over you, then you will see acceleration. Then you will see growth. Then you will see leaps and bounds of progress. Why? Because you have humbled yourself. God will lift you up in due time. We must revive devotion. Friends, God bless you. That is the word on my heart to share. It's, a, it's just three minutes to time and I'm glad that <clears throat> I had enough time just to really share. I want you to think about this thing called devotion and start to ask yourself, are you devoted where you are? Are you available? Are you committed? Are you consistent? Are you constant where God has blessed you? God bless you, friends. Have a blessed and very, very fruitful day. You are loved. Think about this word and most importantly, do something about it. Do something about it. Do something about what you're hearing because when you don't do something, the enemy will snatch the word away. But once you do, then you will start to see the fruit of what God is teaching you today. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining in. It's a blessed day that you're going to have. See you all. Bye.